Welcome. This webinar is brought to you by the New Hampshire Training Institute on Addictive Disorders. You can access the recording of this webinar on our website, hepatica.org. After completing this webinar, please upload and complete. After completing this webinar, please upload and complete the quiz if you're interested in receiving a certificate. You can find the quiz in the file pod throughout this presentation on our website, hepatica.org or you can email us at the training institute at nahatica.org. You can email, mail, or fax the completed quiz. The contact information is on the quiz itself. If you're a member of Nahatica or NADAC, the certificate for this webinar is free. If you aren't a member, the fee is $15. You will receive a certificate worth one CE once you have completed and passed the quiz and paid for the webinar, if applicable, within 21 days. Throughout the New Hampshire Training Institute on Addictive Disorders, this one-hour event is pre-approved by the New Hampshire Board of Licensing for Alcohol and Other Drug Use Professionals. If you have any trouble viewing the webinar, audio problems, or have any technical questions, please contact us at 603-225-7060. And you can find the contact information and the introduction slides in the file pod to the right of your screen. And if you have any questions regarding the material you see today, you can email us at the training institute at nahatica.org. And with that, I'm gonna turn you over to Laura Cooley to talk about AccuDetox. Hi, welcome to AccuDetox, ancient technology for modern challenges. Why are we here? Because in 2017, a New Hampshire law passed that allows non-acupuncturists to be trained in the NADA five-point ear acupuncture protocol and apply it for the purposes of behavioral health by qualified individuals. So NADA is the National Acupuncture Detoxification Association, a not-for-profit training and advocacy organization that encourages community wellness through the use of a standardized auricular acupuncture protocol it's known as the NADA protocol, or 5NP, or 5-point NADA. NADA was formed in 1985, after about 11 years of development, to determine the most effective treatment for people struggling with addiction at Lincoln Recovery Center, which was part of Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx. And then Lincoln Recovery Center became the first training center in the world, We've trained over 10,000 people in the U.S. and over 25,000 people around the world. So there was an initial focus on methadone detox because uh, Lincoln Recovery Center was a detox center um, and people were detoxing off of methadone there. NADA's mission now is to use the NADA protocol for those who are challenged by addictions, mental health, disaster, and emotional trauma. Um, essentially, behavioral health is what we're after these days. So developing the NADA protocol, <clears throat> a reduction in cravings for opium, they were first written about by H.L. Wen, who was a neurosurgeon in Hong Kong. He was doing surgery in an ER for gunshot and knife wounds that were associated with addiction-related events. Um, and those patients told him that their cravings for heroin uh, reduced. Uh, in 1974, members of the Black Panther Party and Young Lords Party read of Dr. Wen's work. They went to Chinatown, bought needles, and began experimenting. So attending to their community through social programs that fed hungry people, um, provided breakfast for children, and were assisting people who were addicted. Heroin was a, the scourge of the neighborhood those days. And these groups developed this treatment through trial and error even taking over Lincoln Hospital's nurses' housing building in the Bronx to deliver services. Um, eventually, the authorities allowed them to stay at Lincoln, and the building became Lincoln Detox, a methadone detox program, and it lasted for over 40 years doing acupuncture. Michael O. Smith was an MD and an acupuncturist. He's a psychiatrist, and ultimately, he is responsible for the spread of AcuDetox throughout the U.S. and the world. Dr. Smith 
informed by those he served and surrounded by extremely dedicated staff and colleagues. It was a collaborative that founded NADA in 1985. And now we have risen to the point where the NADA training is mandatory for anyone attending the addiction training program at Yale School of Psychiatry. So the New Hampshire law. Uh, New Hampshire is about state number 25 that allows the practice of the NADA protocol by non-acupuncturists. House Bill 575 in New Hampshire is one of the broadest laws and it achieves NADA's mission fully for behavioral health, rather being limited to only addiction treatment in programs, which many of the state's laws require you to only use it for addiction treatment and only in a program. In New Hampshire, the cur currently the rules are being written in June of 2018, and they are nearing the end of the process. So before long, those trained in New Hampshire can go into action. House Bill 575 allows qualified individuals to be certified by the state to perform AccuDetox, the language says specifically for the purposes of behavioral health. And what this means is that people who are trying to change their behavior, either because they are involved in illicit substances or compulsive self-destructive behaviors, can do it. Those who need to get more exercise, lose weight, um, these are all implicated in our health issues of this modern day we li are living in. Um, a qualified individual is defined as a licensed healthcare professional, a recovery coach, peer counselor, or other board approved professional trained in NACU detox and under the general supervision of a not a trained licensed acupuncturist. So <clears throat> other qualified individuals include non-licensed professionals. And these are defined in the rules as social workers, emergency service workers, police officers, firefighters, guidance counselors, and substance use workers within a treatment facility. General supervision is required by a not a trained licensed acupuncturist who must be available by phone or other electronic means during business hours and also make two site visits per year. This law will allow for the organic responses of the community to come to fruition. For example, in Ireland, a dynamic group of mothers of those struggling with addiction are trainers and they've trained many AccuDetox specialists. They even go into the jails there. So the definitions of peer counselor and recovery coach do not specify certification. They do not have a specific definition. And that is to allow for all forms of peer and recovery supporters to provide this treatment. There's no limitations on the practice location. This allows for home visits, street outreach, and the opportunity to assist immediately, whenever and wherever the need for support may arise. We know in the drug treatment field that seizing the precious moment when there's a desire for help is crucial, being able to respond immediately. With this treatment, you don't have to wait until the person is inpatient, even in a program. They can be just contemplating, they can be at recovery centers, they can be on the street. The NADA training itself is a me flexible mix of didactic and clinical hours conducted by registered NADA trainers. So where does AccuDetox fit within acupuncture itself? Acupuncture appears to exist. Acupuncture appears to have existed in many indigenous cultures around the world. It sees the mind, the body, the psyche as one unified unit. And humans are seen as self-regulating beings that can be compromised by disharmony or imbalance. Um, if you've ever seen acupuncture charts, they reveal pathways, energy pathways, that are also referred to as channels or meridians. Um, these are pathways that energy is perceived to travel through in it, as it circulates throughout the body. The techniques of traditional medicine 
include acupuncture, using needles to pierce the skin. There are forms where you don't even pierce the skin. Suction cupping, which has become very popular recently when Michael Phelps of the Olympics showed up with cupping bruises, what looked like bruises um, on his body. And um, they look like bruises, but they are not sore. They are really stagnant blood that is brought to the surface to be carried away. So fresh blood with all the nutrients that blood carries comes to the tissue where there's uh, compromise or pain or spasm. It's a lovely technique that, that more and more people are utilizing. We also do moxibustion, which is a heat technique. Um, we make recommendations to diets, food as medicine. How we eat can really impact our health. We can make lifestyle recommendations and we have very sophisticated herbal formulas. Tai Chi, Qi Gong, and more techniques than that. So that's what's involved in traditional medicine, traditional Chinese medicine. Again, these techniques were found around the world, and so it is not strictly Chinese. Needling acupuncture points is intended to restore patterns of harmony and balance. So in Chinese medicine, in traditional forms of medicine, we are looking for the patterns of imbalance and we're looking for the pattern to intervene with to restore balance and harmony. The ear, the hands, the feet, all contain maps of points that refer to the different parts of the body. So most people have seen reflexology maps of the foot and the hand. The ear has one also. The ear is also innervated by the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is called the wandering nerve because it's the largest nerve outside the spinal column and it wanders throughout the body. It has impacts on many, many functions in our body. And using needles or acupressure on the ear can have impacts throughout one's being. Ear acupuncture is a subspecialty of traditional medicine. The earliest evidence of ear acupuncture, they were described in the Yellow Emperor's Classic of Internal Medicine in China, 500 BC. But we know that ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome made clinical use of earrings and other forms of ear stimulation for health challenges, also 500 BC. Ancient Persia, they described medical treatments of sciatic pain, that's low back pain, by cauterization, which is scarring, on the ear in 200 AD. But you also find it in Portugal. Portuguese also scarred the ear for sciatic pain. And a Dr. Paul Nogier in France in 1956, he noticed that the scar was created on what the Chinese had identified as a low back pain point. The Chinese did not actually map out a bunch of points on the ear. What they did was take something like the back handle of the needle and press around. And when they found a sore spot, they would needle it. They would say that that is an indication that that area needs some treatment. And they would just needle it, but they didn't pay a lot of attention to what those points related to. Dr. Nogier proceeded to map out all the parts on the body, on the ear, which are laid out very much like an in inverted fetus on the ear. So if you look at the earlobe, most of the head and the brain points are on the earlobe. It's not a perfect map, but it matches pretty well. So what is Acudetox? What is Acudetox? Acudetox is five small, sterilized, disposable needles placed in specific sites on the ear. There's a picture here of those sites. The needles are very small. They arrive in a package sterilized, and we dispose of them afterwards. So there is no risk of any kind of contamination. This treatment is extremely safe. We've been doing it for over 40 years. There are no malpractice claims ever reported by the dominant malpractice insurer for the profession in the decades that they have provided coverage. That is American Acupuncture Council. They, as I said, they are the dominant malpractice insurer. Now there are more, but for a long time, they were about the only 
people that did this and they have never received a claim on any of our trainees. Ideally, a person will sit quietly for 45 minutes and ideally it's in a group setting. We have found it to have more impact on people when they're in a group. Um, and also, 30 minutes is good, but with 45 minutes, you have more pain reduction. And in our populations these days, chronic pain is about the most common reason for a person to go to a doctor. So we like 45 minutes, and we like it in a group setting. But just because it's more impactful in a group setting, it doesn't mean it's not useful in a one-on-one -on -one counseling session. Um, it is very useful one-on-one -on -one as well. Many people report warmth in their ears, in their body, tingling, sensations, heaviness of the body. There is a very broad range of experiences. Um, some people get sleepy. If you're tired, people often go to sleep. So though there is a range of experiences, they are generally positive. They are overwhelmingly positive. Um, advents, ad, adverse events are rare, but occasionally somebody will get a headache. They'll feel a little dizzy. They might feel lightheaded or they may faint. I can tell you I've done probably 10,000 treatments and no one has ever fainted though a number of people have come close, about four. About four people have almost fainted. So one of the first questions people ask are, does this hurt? The only true answer is most people are pleasantly surprised by how much it doesn't hurt. People are thinking of a hollow bore needle that are used to give shots or draw blood. Um, these needles actually, you know, take a plug of your flesh with it when you insert them. Um, acupuncture needles don't do that. So some people feel a, a pinch. Often people describe it as a mosquito bite. Um, but many people don't feel them go in at all. A very small segment are very sensitive to it. But for the most part, most people don't find it a problematic treatment at all. The pain is not an issue. What points do we use? We use the sympathetic nervous system point that relaxes muscles. It calms the fight, flight, or freeze response. And um, it's a general relaxation point. The next point we use is called Shen Men. That translates to mean spirit's gate. It is also a calming point. It also seems to reduce cravings and pain and helps with insomnia. We use the kidney point, which helps detoxify a person, clears the blood, helps reduce fears, and it provides access to emotional reserves. The liver point also helps detoxify and helps reduce anger and depression. Um, it helps reduce particularly the hyper-reactive kind of anger. We also use the lung point. Again, helps detoxify um, and helps restore the joy of life for people. It's also related to grief and seems to help people process grief. So from my point of view, these points, they help detoxify. They seem to help your organs just function better so the detoxification process is not as rough on people. Um, and basically we would say this is a balancing and strengthening treatment. So what does AccuDetox do? It reduces the symptoms of substance withdrawal, the symptoms of PTSD and current trauma, and helps with mental health challenges seems to reduce cravings, anxiety, depression, insomnia, aches and pains, high blood pressure. It also, on the wellness side, it fosters well-being. It seems to bring alertness to people and relaxation at the same time. People frequently say, I feel relaxed and alert. And we would say it's a treatment for inner emptiness. 
so it can be used for any compulsive behavior. Acupuncture for addiction. If you're using it for addiction, we would say it's not a standalone treatment for addiction, that the benefits diminish when you use it outside of a treatment or a supportive context. Um, yes, it helps cravings. Um, but when people surface, and so without some support, then people do seem to resort to their characteristic way of coping with stress, which tends to be compulsive and destructive behaviors in this clientele. But support can come in many forms, often unconventional. It doesn't mean it needs to be in a comprehensive drug treatment program. That's our best case scenario. That's where we want them to get to, but that's often not an option. And sometimes they aren't ready. So harm reduction is very appropriate and helping people get to the place where they do want to walk into a treatment program is in our, is a goal we have as well. Short term, it assists with the withdrawal process. Short term, it assists with the withdrawal process. So for immediate goals, we can use it for street outreach and provide support when opportunities present themselves to assist those looking for help. And in any situation where some sort of structure or support is offered. For example, in homeless shelters and at harm reduction centers. For long-term recovery of severe addiction, it's most effective when used in a comprehensive treatment program that includes counseling, medical management, and social services. Um, a greater value of AccuDetox is seen post-withdrawal, after a person has withdrawn from any substances, and when the anxieties of how to manage a life without substances start increasing. So we find the value is far greater after detox, for AccuDetox, for helping people manage that. It's useful for relapse prevention only if it's easily accessible and available. So if you have a program and a person relapses, if they can come back without any questions asked and get an ear treatment from your program, that's a very useful bridge. And if a person knows that it's helpful, when they start having trouble, they will seek out help again and help get themselves back on the road that they'd like to be on. Discussion question. Only a licensed professionals can be certified in New Hampshire as AccuDetox specialists. True or false? The answer is false. Unlicensed professionals can also be trained. What are the phases of AccuDetox recovery? In a best case scenario, phase one is early recovery. Ideally, when detoxing treatments are received, they're received every day until their person has seven to 10 substance-free days. Withdrawal relief lasts for about eight hours, and the people that we treat are given an herbal sleep detox tea for a nighttime relief. Um, it's called sleep, sleep tea, sleep detox tea. It's available online, or I can give you the contact information for it. Um, they are very usual and normal Western herbs that can be bought at any health food store, or any herbal store. So phase one is just trying to detox off of any substances. Phase two is a stabilization phase, and that's when counseling is initiated. Treatments are received two to three times per week while the recipients navigate the deeper waters of their own personal growth as they build strength where their lives have been very fragile. So this phase can go on as long as six months. It depends on your drug treatment program. At Lincoln Hospital, people stayed there for over a year. So again, this is best case scenario. 
Phase three is the empowerment phase, and we recommend one time a week or as needed while a person is more stable but struggling with the concept of staying centered in a somewhat unbalanced world. And relapse can be averted or quickly addressed and turned around by a series of treatments when relapse occurs. So with any, with any luck, best case scenario, this will be available to people for the rest of their lives. So it's the same technique, but a different application. We're calling it AccuWellness for behavioral health changes. After overwhelming events, AccuDetox, or AccuWellness in this setting, can interrupt the process of developing PTSD, sometimes with just one treatment. So it's useful for frequently experienced insomnia after overwhelming events, after disasters and terrifying events. It is frequently difficult for people to sleep. And anybody who hasn't slept for three or four days is at a high risk for psychosis. So if we can help a person get sleep after a traumatic event, we're doing our job. And that can literally happen in one treatment. Acute stress symptoms must be observed for 30 days in order to get a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. So yes, you must be having those symptoms for 30 days before you get this diagnosis. And that's why we belong treating people while they only have acute stress. We'd like to interrupt the development of PTSD. That being said, symptoms can arise for the first time years after an overwhelming event occurs. So it, is, it has been documented repeatedly that people can develop symptoms two years later. AccuWellness can alleviate discomfort all along that continuum at any time in the process. And furthermore, untangling and addressing the symptoms of PTSD, addiction, physical pain, anxiety, and depression, it makes it it's very challenging for clinicians and the people who need services. And it makes the ability to make and sustain behavioral challenges quite different difficult. So, AccuWellness, AccuDetox, we have the history and capacity to address all of these symptoms at once in one treatment. And this is a huge, huge benefit. The more severe or chronic the addiction or the mental health challenge, the more intervention is needed, meaning the more treatments a person might need. It's certainly easier to turn around and restore balance in people who haven't been suffering for a long time. So another goal would be to have treatments as soon as possible for those who want them. It's a simple technique with broad applications. We would say, and our experience is, that it's useful for any compulsive behavior. And applying AccuDetox for behavioral health purposes is seen as crucial to fully addressing what drives the initiation of substance use, the cycle of addiction, and the accompanying despair. I think it's safe to say at this point that despair is driving the cycle of addiction. And if you weren't in despair when you started using narcotics, you are soon in despair once you have initiated it and started build, building tolerance to narcotics. We've used AccuDetox in all types of addiction programs, inpatient, outpatient, MAT programs, methadone programs, harm reduction, prisons, jails, boot camps, sex workers and johns, well, treatment programs, initiated by SAGE, which stands for Standing Against Global Exploitation, began in San Francisco. It's a wonderful program. They've got the Kennedy Innovation Award for talking the San Francisco police into bringing the Johns into an eight-hour class in their program under the idea that prostitution is not a victimless crime. 
Acupuncture was also implemented in the very first drug diversion court program in Miami, Florida, which was designed by Michael O. Smith, the MD, psychiatrist, and acupuncturist who spread AcuDetox throughout the world. And subsequently, it made it into about 30% of the drug diversion courts across the country. The reason that it was not implemented widely is because there were only laws in a handful of states that did not that would allow non-acupuncturists to provide the service. The drug diversion court model was designed by Michael Smith. Judge Klein from Miami was given a year off from the bench to go around the country to see who was dealing the most adequately with the cocaine and crack crisis and he walked away from Lincoln Detox saying, what I see going on there is the best thing I have seen. So they brought Michael Smith down and Judge Klein says that he explained to them the needs of the clients and so that their system and their model is designed around the needs of the clients. And for anyone who hasn't looked into the, the data on drug courts, it's pretty good. Other addiction programs we we have treatments in, gambling, sexual addiction programs. The Meadows in Arizona uses it in their sexual addiction program as well as their trauma and their addiction programs. We use it in psychiatric facilities, inpatient, outpatient, homeless children's programs in Mexico City and Peru, parenting classes, HIV and AIDS clinics, domestic violence and batter intervention groups, domestic violence diversion courts also started in Florida, chronic violent offender jail programs in rape crisis centers, breast cancer survivor groups, survivors of violence, family members and support systems of trauma survivors, caregiver support groups, military bases and the VA for addictions and trauma, um, in fact, social workers who will be embedded with troops were just trained in Fort Hood in Texas and will be going out with the troops overseas and be right there. Sexual offender programs. Ben Wharton of Sweetwater, Texas had a three-year sex offender program. He described the same dynamic we see in drug treatment and that is after a little while of getting the treatment, they stop denying their actions and they start working on, on rectifying the situation. Job Corps programs with at-risk youth, employee assistance programs in Detroit, sickle cell anemia support groups, the sickle cell anemia group of Atlanta, Georgia. They trained members and when a sickle cell health crisis is coming on, they can treat themselves and avert the crisis. There's a program in Canada, believe it or not, for a gluten intolerance wellness program. <laughs> for anyone who has tried to eat no gluten in their life, it's a task. And this 10-week program uses your acupuncture to support people trying to transition into that for the health the reasons. Hypertension reduction, and senior centers. Agencies that have used ear acupuncture, St. Vincent's Hospital in Manhattan post 9-11, in New York City high schools around Ground Zero, the Financial District, the VFW in Chinatown, and in Staten Island, there was a ferry crash and they called for the ear acupuncture team to come out immediately which helped them establish a clinic in their Staten Island Hospital. Fire departments, New York City after 9-11, New Orleans after Katrina, Shreveport, Louisiana after a chief was electrocuted, um, the professional firefighters of Louisiana, New Orleans EMS, search and rescue teams, the New Orleans and Lafayette Musicians Clinic, the Border Security Services of India, Border Trauma Services along the border of Mexico, 
The Medical Reserve Corps now has several acupuncture chapters in California, Colorado, and more in New Mexico. More are forming. And Indian Health Services on various Native American reservations. Other places that we hold clinics, community health centers, community centers of any kind, homeless shelters, Indian reservations, refugee programs, refugee camps, senior centers, undocumented workers, farmers markets. We easily provide treatments wherever we go. So what is the value of Detox? One of its greatest values is that it's a nonverbal treatment. So that means it's useful for people who don't want to talk, for those who are having difficulty articulating because they've been traumatized or overwhelmed, because they've relapsed or are actually in the process of using drugs when they're speaking to you. In the situation of trauma, we have seen functional MRIs that show often when people start to tell their story of the traumatic event, their verbal centers actually go blank and their ability to articulate just goes offline. So um, in addition to the fact that it does seem from modern research that telling your story over and over again is not only not always helpful, it can be damaging. So very useful for those whose verbal skills are not very good at the moment. So that includes people who are frightened, very scared. Sometimes people become nonverbal when they are severely frightened. People who are shy have trouble being very social to begin with. People who are in an emotional crisis who feel homicidal or psychotic. People who are developmentally delayed or head injured. People who are deaf. Deaf people live in a nonverbal world. My experience when treating deaf people is that they have a huge appreciation for this. Or people who don't speak the dominant language. Lincoln Hospital trained people from around the world. They frequently did not speak English. I witnessed it myself. You don't have to be able to speak the language in order to perform this treatment for people. And then finally, people who are new to the program or in the process of building trust with the program and with counselors, which can take a long time. It's a non-stigmatizing treatment. This is huge. I believe our greatest problem of people getting help, besides the fact that we do not have enough treatment, is the fact that it's stigmatized and people don't want to be identified as being an addict or being anything negative that labels them. So with this treatment, it's focused on wellness. You don't have to re reveal any problem in order to receive help. We don't need a diagnosis. The treatment can occur without revealing any need of yours or behavior that is stigmatized. Um, and that means people who need help can come in, not reveal that they have a shameful uh, behavior or need, and get help. And what we see is that they begin asking for help after a little bit of time. It doesn't stigmatize people because we do the same treatment for everyone. No one is seen as sicker than others. Nobody's getting, nobody's getting special treatment. And this is important. Also, staff receives treatment. That is the protocol, the same treatment. And this builds trust with the staff. It models the reality of life stressors and that all humans need support. And that's good role modeling for the people that we are trying to help. So in New Hampshire, we can create restoration stations where anyone in the community is welcome. 
So that is our goal. Acu Wellness Restoration Stations, where anyone can walk in and receive a treatment, no questions asked, no diagnosis made, and serve as a bridge to other services. Because one of the values of Acu Detox is that people who get it start bridging to other services. So first of all, if it's done in a group setting, again, the ideal scenario, it facilitates people sharing their resources and supports, and it helps provide guidance. I personally had an AIDS HIV clinic doing acupuncture with HIV positive patients with 10 beds in a room, and they would share very good advice on a regular basis. So in addition to them being able to help each other, patients start accessing other needed services to advocate for their own needs. Medical services, HIV testing, housing challenges, vocational training, education, and safety from violence. We've seen quite a number of people obtain restraining orders against violent partners once they start getting treated with the ear acupuncture. And in Austin, Texas, the state HIV testing site documented that those who test positive for HIV at their site were more likely to stay for the education if they got an ear treatment when they came for the test. And they'd begin to get medical help for their illness rather than choosing denial and refraining from seeking medical attention. Again, stigmatized behavior stops people from getting help. Uh, another value is it retains people in programs. So people who get AccuDetox, they stay in addiction treatment programs longer and they complete treatment programs at higher rates than people who don't receive it. To me, one of the most important values of AccuDetox is the violence reduction. The RSVP program in San Francisco County Jail number seven that's the Resolve to Stop the Violence program. It's a special violent prisoner unit. 30% are murderers, 30% chronic rapists, and 30% chronic domestic violence perpetrators. They had one incident of violence over several years compared to two to three per week in the regular San Francisco jail population. I visited that program myself twice, and that one violent incident held three years. Also at the Denver County Jail, Project Recovery from the Mile High, Mile High Council documented no class one or two fighting violations among those who received five or more treatments. Prisons in Germany use it. So integrating NADA into addiction programs, ideally this is the best case scenario. There is no barriers to getting it. You don't need a referral. It's available on site rather than another location. They come for treatment, it's available right there. Um, ideally it's part of an addiction program as opposed to being provided after the program hours as an elective activity. So if your program ends at five, staying from five to six to get a treatment, you will have very little participation. Um, that is because the program is sending the message, this is not important. If it was important, it would be part of the program. So you get low participation out of the gate, if that's how you try to use it. If there's people in the group that don't want to have acupuncture, you have them sit in the room with the people getting it anyway. Benefits are still received. It's a little like hanging 10 violins on the wall, plucking the A string and all of the A strings vibrate. So this is helping A strings vibrate. It's a good metaphor for what happens to our nervous systems. Our nervous systems, when we receive acupuncture, start regulating themselves. People calm down and it spreads around the room. We also offer ear acupressure with 
a black radish seed or a magnet taped onto the ear. These can be applied after a treatment. If a program is running Monday through Friday and they're getting a treatment every day, but they're still detoxing on Friday afternoon, we can put ear seeds or beads on the ear and it seems to extend the treatment. And um, actually they've been applying, some recovery coaches have been applying them at the recovery centers here in New Hampshire. And people say that the magnets and the seeds are very helpful as well. They can be stay on as long as a week and we seem to have good results with them. Something I still find hard to believe from just a little magnet or a seed, but I've been watching it happen for decades now. Another part of the protocol is that staff gets treatment, and whenever possible, they get treatment in the room with the program participants. We always advocate for anything that levels the playing field and the power dynamics between staff and those who are receiving services. And the protocol is that also that the client support circle and dependents impacted by the addiction receive NADA. Um, the support circles, which are not always family members, they need support also. It's a system and we need to help the entire system. So we like to treat anyone impacted by the system that's being challenged by having an someone who's struggling with addiction in their midst. Why use AccuDetox after traumatic events? Because the survivors of traumatic events report ear acupuncture to be useful in diminishing the symptoms of acute stress disorder. So surveys have shown us that people report improved mental clarity, improved alertness, improved ability to sleep, ability to cope, that is a major one, reduction of depression and anxiety, reduction of flashbacks and intrusive thoughts, and a reduction of aches and pains and muscle spasms. At St. Vincent's Integrative Stress Management Program, it was the closest trauma center to ground zero during the 9-11 attacks. They opened a free community clinic on September 12th and treated more than 40,000 people over the next five years, and the Red Cross funded this clinic. It also paid, the Red Cross also paid for auricular acupuncture or ear acupuncture for survivors of Hurricanes Katrina, Rita, and Wilma. We trained some people in the Dulac Nation. We trained some natives in Dulac, the Homa Nation, and the New Orleans Musicians Clinic. Cost savings. There's a relatively low cost of service delivery if it's performed by behavioral health staff as part of their job. Elizabeth Stout, she's a psychiatrist that runs the Pueblo State Hospital Circle Program that is a 90-day inpatient dual diagnosis program. Inpatient clients require less medication to maintain stability. So since it is not widely available once they get out of that program. She has to taper the Accu Detox before they get out of the program so that she can get a real life medication dose and raise it back up to where it needs to be when they can't don't have access to ear acupuncture. Retention rates go up and leaving AMA reduces. It's cheaper to see one person all the way through a program than to be continuously admitting new clients to keep up the census. We have seen it reduce staff sick leave and turnover. So using a baseline of the previous three years, the Heart of Texas MHMR documented a 30% drop in employee sick time and the employee turnover dropped to 10% from the 30 to 35 statewide standard. Reduced side effects of necessary medications result in higher compliance with medication. We have seen tardive dyskinesia reduce and go away. Medication compliance yields more stability and fewer crises. If they take their medication, we all know that they're more stable, generally speaking. 
They need less assistance from public resources and more stable families result in less foster care. We have seen stabilization of chronically mentally ill patients. And we have seen that it is more effective on the most difficult clients. In addiction, there is no current treatment for addiction that works better for on your more severe addiction. Boston University did a retrospective cohort study of 8,000 clients discharged from publicly funded detox programs in Boston, 93 to 94. Michael Schwartz, who did the study, was not looking at acupuncture, but he noticed in the program where there was acupuncture, their readmitted rates were lower. And what he noted was acupuncture appears particularly effective for those clients whose primary substance was alcohol and for those with two or more detox admissions in the year preceding their index admission, meaning they'd already been in detox two times that year already. These are more severe and chronic alcoholics. And what you see is more progress with your more severe patients. And again, in Waco, the te Texas Heart of Texas MHMR, we performed a pilot study on chronically mentally ill clients of MHMR. They had to have a history of five years of institutionalization in their past in order to be in this study. They were duly diagnosed clients of the state. They needed help with smoking sensation. And comparing the same six months of the previous three years, reduction of inpatient days of 70% in the first group living independently with a 50% reduction in tobacco smoking. The second group was living in a halfway house and they achieved an 80% reduction in hospital admissions for a six month period. So that first group, that 70% reduction, they estimated on 16 people, it would have cost the state $140,000 that they didn't spend. Discussion question. Is AccuDetox useful as a treatment for anxiety? True, false. The answer is true. It has been very useful for anxiety. Unique aspects. It's useful for any compulsive behavior. Applying AccuDetox for behavioral health purposes is seen as crucial to fully addressing what drives the initiation and cycle of addiction and the accompanying despair. It strengthens a person so they're more prepared to take on the challenges of rebuilding their life. And clients will learn that relief is available without being escapistly high, without using drugs, and without losing control. Um, another unique thing is that they don't have to be abstinent receive treatment like 12 step. It accepts you right where you are and helps facilitate the process. It doesn't judge. The needles don't care if you're lying. And it gives a simple, soothing, reliable experience. Words and relationships are not reliable. People with histories, long trauma histories, <laughs> frequently have great difficulty trusting words and relationships. And it addresses individual needs. So if you have pains, they often go away. This shows a person the connection between their mind, body, and their emotions and helps teach them about themselves. At the Pueblo State Hospital Circle Program in Colorado, Dr. Stout, once again, she's the director of a no smoking 90 day inpatient addiction program for duly diagnosed patients, she documented reduced levels of anger. Those not getting the ear acupuncture had increases in anger. It's a no smoking program, so they are not smoking cigarettes, as well as reduced chronic pain, which is virtually 100% in a duly diagnosed population have chronic pain. Side effects of needed medications are reduced. The Heart of Texas MHMR found a dramatic reduction of tardive dyskinesia unpleasant side effects from the old psychotropic medications, which many people in poor states are still on. We have new, new uh, psychotropic medications, but they are much more expensive. AccuDetox brings people into the present, and that's why those in recovery like it. 
because it makes the present pleasant. It makes it livable. If you make the present livable, then they become willing to take a risk. And then they can put one foot in the present, one foot in the past, or one foot in the present and one foot in the future. If you've got one foot in the present that isn't panicked, it makes it possible to deal with a troubled past and a challenging or unknown future. Other useful benefits, the Health Resources Services Administration, or known as HRSA, awarded the Merillac Clinic, a federally qualified health center in Grand Junction, Colorado, a best practices for their AccuDetox program, and they plan to recommend it to all FQHCs across the nation to integrate it into their hypertension protocol because they tracked that high blood pressure came down. Uh, we have also seen low blood pressure come up. What is the goal in New Hampshire? The goal is to link communities to individuals and individuals to communities. Used in groups, it helps break the isolation of the addictive lifestyle and the consequences of overwhelming events. So what is common to trauma and to addiction is isolation. And breaking the isolation of those two situations is crucial. So statewide, we would like to see AccuWellness restoration stations, acupuncture-based stigma-free zones that incorporate mind-body restorative practices from within the local community and bring techniques useful for self-soothing and serve as a bridge and referral base for more extensive services to those in need. We could mobilize an army of primary prevention specialists so in a true attempt at preventative medicine, create a safety net to stabilize the unstable and potentially prevent stress-induced illnesses by mobilizing primary prevention specialists. The goal of acupuncture is to shift subtle energies into balance, restore movement and ease, and prevent further imbalance. So that is our goal for the citizens of New Hampshire. And Danny Adams, who's the Louisiana Spirit Coastal Counseling Program first responder coordinator for the state of Louisiana. He was a, he was a firefighter. He's got policemen in his family. There's a picture of him at our NADA clinic at the International Firefighters Union annual meeting. He says, since 2005, I have had the opportunity to see for myself the effects of AccuDetox method of acupuncture on first responders in Louisiana. Doing SISM, which is the Crisis Intervention Stress Management Program that first responders are trained in. Doing SISM and outreach to first responders after disasters is incredibly difficult to do. But with acupuncture, I have seen first responders be still and quiet for a short period to relax for a change. During this, we have an open window of opportunity to get first responders back on track with their objectives they are assigned to do. We found better sleep and less frustration as a result of acupuncture with the first responders. In a real true effort, I would love to see the acupuncturist model on a national basis to outreach to first responders. I see less suicides, divorce rates, addictive disorders, and abuse as a result of working together. Training. The NADA training in New Hampshire includes four classroom days, following with some clinical supervision, reading, and understanding of support groups. Our training model is a really flexible model. It's created to adapt to variable situations and audiences. The laws across the country vary greatly. Who can be trained to do what, in what situations, so it has to be flexible. And it is also a competency-based training. So for more information on available training, you can contact me. There's my email address. You can go to AccuDetox.com, NADA's website, for more information or contact me with any questions. Thank you so much. Keep the faith.